Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video you are going to be discussing about the brass transfer predictions using Python and machine learning. So this is the data set that I am going to collect from the Kaggle that's called the brass transfer Wisconsin diagnostic data set. So this is the data set. So you can see the about the data set. You can also read it. So it have the 33 columns and one target class that's called the diagnosis. So what you need to do, just you need to download the data set and after that you are going to do it. Uh, like we are going to do the data processing, we are going to uh, visualize the data and after that we are going to apply the machine learning algorithm. So now without any further ado, let's go start on the video. So well, so this is the data set that I am going to collect from the Kaggle and extract the data set. So if you are trying to open this data and you can see here this is our nothing but the data set. So it have 32 columns probably. So you can see here it have the features that's called the radius mean, perimeter mean and the smoothness and also one column that's called the diagnosis. So it have just two values, one is M and another one is B. So that's mean this is one classification tax, right? So now we're going to solve this problem. I'm trying to predict that using some machine learning algorithm. So now I'm going to open my Jupyter Notebook. So for that, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to type here CMD and type here Jupyter Notebook. So it will actually open this notebook on my local server or you can say the local browsers. Well, so now you can see it open the uh, file, I mean, the open the Jupyter Notebook on my browsers. So I'm going to click here to create new Python 3 file and it will create here one Python file for me. Well, so now what we're going to do here first, you're going to load the data set, and after that, you're going to do some feature extraction of the feature selection part, and also you're going to do the data pre processing part. So, first, we need to import here the pandas as pd because you're going to load the data set from our Drupal. You can also rename your file. So let's say model building, right? Then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to load the data set from my directory. So for that, I'm going to use here pd.read. This is one CSV file, so that's why read csv, read underscore csv. Then I'm going to give here the path of the data set because this file is already in the same folder. So you can give here my actual path. So this is my data.csv, right? So let's assign it to variable that's called df equal to pd.readcsv. If I try to show it, df, you can see here all the row and all the columns are visible. But it has some problem, it's not showing all the columns, right? You can see here it has 33 columns and it has the 569 rows. So if I'm trying to see the head, df.head, it will show the five rows of the data set. If you try to give here the 10, so it will show me the 10 rows of the data set. Now we are going to check the data information. So let's say data or you can say df.info. So it will actually help you to uh, give a look of the information of the data set regarding, right? So you can see here, it have the 33 columns, right? And also you can see here the data type, I mean, whose data type it is, and also the null count, it's don't have any null count, okay? And you can see here another, column is actually null. I mean, it don't have any values, right? So we can also try to use here df.isna. We can actually check that. Okay, it's not actually giving the value. So let's say I'm going to sum it. So let's say sum. Okay, it have, okay, it should be the, like that. Well, so now you can see here, it have no null value. So it just in the last column, it have one null value. That's called the uh, unnamed 32. Okay, we can simply drop it out, right? So we can also use the df.describe. So it will actually give me the description uh, regarding your data set. So you can see here, it will give me the description regarding my data set. So you can see here the A through and the 32 columns. That's mean it have one categorical column. You can see here the object type, that's mean the diagnosis. So this is not one numerical value because it have the malignant or the benign gene like that value. So that's why it's not actually showing up in the descriptions because this D after the type actually help us to show the data set in a numerical format. You can see the count, you can see the mean, you can see the standard deviations, minimum and the maximum value and also the percentile, 25% or 50% or 75% percentile like that, right? So that's why it's not showing up because the diagnosis was one kind of categorical value. So that's why. So now what we can do, we can simply drop this column that's called the unnamed one. 
so for that what you're going to do you're going to just drop the drop null i mean the null i will call on from my data set so for that you can use the df dot drop now and axis should be the one because this is one column so we simply actually remove this column from the data set because we don't need it right because we don't have any value right so now if i'm trying to see that data set that's a df dot hat okay i need to keep here the 10 and you can see it have 33 column it's not actually uh okay it's not actually right now it's not actually drop them so for that what I, what I need to do i need to just pass it inside my drop now so df equal to drop now now if i try to see it you can see a 32 columns right so if i'm trying to see the shape of that that's a df dot shape so you can see the shape that's been 32 are columns and 569 are the rows okay so now what i'm going to do here we are going to simply check that now if the data set is a balance of the imbalance right so if the data set is a balance we can apply here some another technique if the data set is an imbalance we will apply here another technique right so now what i'm going to do here you need to just check the count of the diagonals because this is nothing but one classification task just it have two values right binary classification you can solve so that so let's say df and just i'm going to pass here my diagonals column this one and I'm just going to simply values count. So let's say value and let's put counts. So it should give me the counts of that, right? Well, so the B value it have the 357 and the malignant is nothing but 212. It's not seems like it's not an imbalanced data set because uh, it's mostly 50 to 60 to 40 like that. So we can also actually create here one count plot. So for that, what are you gonna do here? You're gonna simply use your count plot so that you can see it correctly in a graphical format so you can use here the sns so sns is nothing but my c bond so we don't import it here right now so i need to import it so for that i'm going to import here the sns so let's say import c bond as sns and i'm going to use here the sns dot you can see the count plot so you can see the count plot and i'm going to pass here my df dot diagnosis so this one okay this is the count plot and i'm just going to pass here the label let's say i'm just going to pass it level to the count well so you can see here this data set is not seems like the imbalance because you can see it's mostly okay that uh diagnosis and the malignant is not 50 50 it's like uh up you can see the it can be the 60 40 or uh, or you can say not 50 actually <laughs> because it have you can see here 357 and the 250 it's not 50 50 so this data set is not an imbalanced data set so you can apply, apply here some generalized machine learning algorithm so in order to do that what i can do first you're going to do some pre-processing on the data set so that we can have a look the data set that uh, like pair plot or the heat map or you can set the correlation so that which kind of algorithm that you're going to use here so now first i'm going to convert this diagonals file or you can say diagonals column into one numerical column so because this is one categorical data so now i'm going to convert this m should be one or b should be the zero so that we can classify it easily because the machine learning algorithm actually uh, apply on the numerical data so for that what i'm going to do here you can actually do the on one hundred encoding or you can set the label encoder so for that what i'm going to do here i'm going to import it from the scale on so let's get scale on dot pre-processing i'm going to import here the level encoder so it's called level encoder or you can say the one hot encoding right so you can see here it actually imported now i'm going to create here one instance let's say call lb and let's say level encoder i'm just create here one one instance of that now i'm going to pass my diagnosis inside my level encoder so let's say lb dot c transform so it have one uh, method is called the feed transform so now what i'm going to do here i'm going to pass here my diagnosis so this is my second column or you can say zero and one so i am going to use here the df.ilog so let's say df.ilog i am just to select all the row and i'm going to go from i'm just going to go from one because this is number one column and then i'm going to get the values of that so let's say values and I'm going to pass it inside my df.ilog same file. And I'm just going to make it like that. Okay. 
So it is actually encoding the data set, values. Now if I'm trying to see the df dot hat, okay, it's not, okay, again. So now you can see how it convert into one and also the zero, right? If I'm trying to call this one functions again, I mean they call this uh, same method, diagonalysis dot value count, you can see here one and the zero. So zero is nothing but my malignant, right? And okay, zero is nothing but my ba banishing, and I'm not actually trying to pronounce it correctly. So M is malignant, so it's convert into the one. Now we can simply apply here the machine learning algorithm, but it's better we can see the fear plot so that you can actually see the data set correctly, or you can say we first let's see first see the correlation of the data set. Let's say df dot core. So well, so these are our correlations. So now what I'm gonna do here, we in order to show it in a graphical format, uh, in order to visualize that, we are going to use here another library that's called the Seaborn. So first we're going to import here the Seaborn. I think I already import it. Okay, I already import it. So I need to also import here the matplotlib. So let's say matplotlib, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and i have to also initialize the figure size so let's say plt dot figure and i'm going to give here the fig size because this is this is quite big right so when you're trying to actually uh, see the correlations it's quite big you can see here it have the 32 columns so that's why i initialize the figure size okay now figure size is actually uh, okay so now I'm going to use here the heat map. So I'm just going to pass here the first, all the rows and one from let's say 32, it has 32. And I am just going to, okay, df.ilock, I need to use here df.ilock. Well, and I need to use here the correlations, right? So now you can see, if you see the correlations, it's quite tough to get that. So it's better we can see the first 10. So let's first 10. Okay, well, so this is the correlations, but it don't have any value. So let's make should be the annotate should be true. So let's make annotate should be true. Okay, T should be the capital in Python. Okay, again, true. Well, so you can see here, this is the diagonal one. So it also have the one. And now based on the diagnosis, it have the positive correlations, you can see positive correlations and you can see radius mean and the text table we have the uh, positive correlations. Okay, so you can see all the values have the positive correlations, right? If I'm trying to see the 32, just have a look, 32, okay, okay, <laughs> it's try to, okay, if I'm trying to make it, let's say 25 and 25, let's make it 25 to 25. Now let's see the figure. <laughs> Okay, it's quite tough to actually show the heat map. So I see that all the value have the positive correlations. Okay, just it have some negative correlation be based on the texture mean and the smoothness mean. But I just need here the diagonalysis based on the diagonalysis because it's a classification tax. It have the positive correlation, right? So now what I can do, we can simply keep all the uh, column for the preparing model, we do need to actually do the feature scaling part here. Okay, so it's better we can actually show here on peer plot so that we can actually an analyze that which kind of algorithm that is suit for this data set. So for that, I'm going to use here the SNS dot peer plot. So it is called a peer plot. And now I'm going to pass here my values. So let's, I'm going to pass here the value, this one from one to 10. And I'm going to pass in my hue. So hue is nothing but the diagnosis because based on diagnosis, I'm trying to uh, show my peer plot so that which kind of algorithm that I, I'm going to actually use here. So let's have a look. What's the peer plot actually can you got here? So it has a tan, right? It has a tan rows. So definitely it will take time. So you have to show the peer plot. Okay, just a white. You'll try to show it. Well, so this is the peer plot. Okay, it's quite big. So let's try to plot for first five. So 
so that you can actually see it properly okay now it looks cool it's zero is a uh zero is something about my benzene and one is something about my malignant so if i'm trying to see the data set okay the distribution is okay fine okay this is my data point right this is my data point so we can simply classify the data set using one straight line or we need to use here the logic tree regression so that you can classify the data right because i think it's better we can use here the logic tree regression or the linear regression you can actually use here because we can just classify the data data using one straight line or we can also it has some uh, collisions also so it's better you can actually use here the first try out the logic tree regressions in our data and after that we are trying to use here the another algorithm in order to classify the data right so now what you're going to do here first i am going to split the data set into the dependent and the indep independent features and after that i'm going to test here i mean the it split the data set into the 80 percent that 20 percent then i'm going to apply here the machine learning algorithm right so let's uh actually divide into the dependent and the independent features so let's say df dot i log i'm going to go from all the rows and i'm going to go from 2 to 32 okay not 3 because number one column is nothing but my feature class or you can say the target class i'm going to get the values from here let's say values and if i'm trying to see the x so this is one array now if i'm trying to see for the y let's say y equal to df dot i log so this is nothing but for the number one zero one because my diagnosis column is number one so if it, this is one zero and this is the one so what I can do, I can simply use here the one. Well, so now I'm going to split the data set into train, test, and split. So for that, I'm going to import it from sklearn, from sklearn.model selections. So you can use here the tab on my keyboard and it will auto suggest you. I'm going to import here the train, test, and split. So let's call train, test, and split. So now I am going to pass my train test split and I'm just going to pass my X and Y and my test size should be let's say 20% and let's give you one random state so so that state should be zero. Now I'm going to assign into the four variable let's call X train then we have the X test and Y train and the Y test. Well, now I'm going to apply here the machine learning algorithm. Well, so this is my data set. We can simply first use the logic tree regressions. So it's better we can also standard our data. I mean, we can actually uh, use the standardization because you can see here this data set value is not actually in a one single format. So if I see that, so it's better we can actually make this data set inside one zero or one range or minus one to one range so that we can actually classify the data easily so for that we can actually use here the standard scalar so let's try to apply it on our data let's say from sk learn dot preprocessing dot preprocessing so it actually help you to uh make your data in the scalar format so i'm going to import here the standard scalar let's say import the standard scalar standard scalar and let's assign into uh, one variable or you can say the create one instance of that so let's say st equal to a standard scalar so let's say this is a standard scalar and i am trying to use this in my x train and also my y train data so let's say x train train this one x train equal to st dot feed transform so I'm going to feed the transform data with my X train so that my data is ranging between the minus one to one. If I'm trying to feed it, let's say I'm going to add here one column, let's call X. So you can see here the data is not actually um, the range of the minus one to one. So it's better we can range it in the one to minus one so that we can classify the data easily. So it's very better to um, having this data into the scalar format. So let's say I'm going to just copy this. And I'm going to same apply it to the Y train data. So let's say Y train data. And I'm just going to copy this, right? Copy. 
okay well we got some maybe error expected to be error but one day error instead okay we need to apply it it's not applied to the x train we need to apply it to the x test because y is nothing but my class so we need to apply it with the numerical data and shape should be the same okay x test is not defined okay x should be capital uh -huh. okay now fine so if we're trying to see the x train so now you can see a data set is actually containing uh, in the range of minus one to one you can see this is not minus one right now data is actually uh, in a one single range x train and the y train if i'm trying to see the shape the shape is have the 30 right and if i'm trying to see the shape of the x train i mean y train so you can see here the row right so this is the rows now you can simply use here the machine learning algorithm so for that i'm going to import it from sklearn from sklearn dot linear model because we're going to first apply the uh, linear regressions oh no actually logistic regressions so import the you can also apply here the linear regressions so let's say logistic regression and i'm just going to initialize it so let's say this is my lock and let's say logistic regressions and now i'm simply using logistic regressions lock dot fit i'm going to fit it based on our x train and the y train data Okay, and if I'm trying to see the score, so let's say log dot score, and I'm going to pass here my x train and the y train. So we got the ninety-eight percent accuracy, right? Using the logic regression. So let's try to apply here the linear regressions. So let's try to make this should be linear regressions. Okay, linear is not defined. Let me run this file again. Okay. So in a linear regression, we actually got the accuracy is nothing but 77%. So higher as in the logistic regressions, we got the accuracy at the 98%, right? Well, so if I see the data again, so this is, yes, we cannot actually divide the data using one straight line. So that's why we actually got here 77% accuracy. Well, so you can also see the accuracy matrix or you can see the accuracy score. So for that, you need to use here the sklearn dot matrices. Okay, matrix, matrices, and I'm going to import here the accuracy score. So let's say accuracy score. Well, so let's try to pass it accuracy score. And I'm going to pass here my y test. And I'm trying to use the lock, my model dot predict. So using the x test data. Okay, so the x should be capital. Well, so we, you can see the accuracy is nothing but for 95% with the unseen data. That's really fine. Well, so you can also see the classification report. So let's say classification report. So let's say classification report. Okay, fine. So you can simply copy this and we can simply pass the data. This one. Well, okay, it's not defined and it also run this file again. So this is my classification report. Right. So well, it's not showing up because I need to also print it out. So that's why it's not actually uh, give me the correct results. So let's try to print it out. We need to actually use the print functions. So now it looks cool, right? So this is my accuracy. Okay, not accuracy. It's the positions and the recall. And this is my accuracy. It's a uh, ninety-six percent accuracy. And the recall and FN score. So that's fine. That's really fine. Well. So well, if you're trying to save this model inside one pickle file, you can also do it. So for that, you can use the pickle. So for so, so that you can actually use it later on. So you can use here the pickle dot dump. And we need to pass here my model. And I'm going to use here the open method. And I'm going to give here my file name. That's a model dot save. Or let's say model dot pickle. And I'm going to save it. Or you can say not pick actually, it's called a pickle and in the right mode right so it's saved inside my folder right let's try to see this out or you can also load it so you need to load it what you need to do you need to just simply use your pickle dot load you can simply use this open method and make this wb to the rb and you can see here this is one logistic regressions right 
So this is how you can actually load the model. And this is how you can actually save the model in your folder, right? So this is all about the brain strength and predictions using Python and machine learning. So now it is your job to apply some another machine learning algorithm like decision tree and the random forest classifier. So just you need to do it in your own. And we have one Discord server. Just you need to go on the Discord server and join the Discord server. So well, so this is our Discord server that's called Knowledge Doctor Server. So link will be in the description. Just you need to go on here and join our server and go on the machine learning tab and apply here some machine learning technique on my brass tensor prediction dataset, like decision tree classifier or the random forest classifier. And you need to give me the accuracy and the classification report on the server. Okay, so that's it for today. Now hope you enjoy this video and make sure to subscribe to the channels and don't forget to hit the bell icon. And I'll be back with another tutorial. So till then, take care and bye bye.